Pat's in shore. Um, may, like I say, maybe some of you who've been able to see him a little bit better because I kind of keep getting glimpses of his faces, but not really long enough to actually recognize exactly who he is. So I believe... So it's definitely not Mfumo and it's definitely not Tinyo. I can tell you guys that. I know that for sure. And a lot of you are saying that that's the same thing. So exactly. It's not um, him at all. Um, it must be Insuko or Nena. But it looks like Insuko to me. I, haven't, I can't see that equal sign on the nose that it distinguishes Nena from Insuko. So I think that it must be him. But he or whoever it is, he's on a serious, serious mission to get somewhere. And I, he hasn't vocalized really. He made a small little sort of contact call when the kudu barked at him. But other than that, he seems to be just really striding. And I don't know where he's off to because we didn't hear any lions calling last night at all. Well, I certainly didn't. I didn't hear any this morning calling north of us. But for some reason, he's decided he's going to try and go somewhere. And isn't it interesting with the Birminghams? You can see why sometimes Sometimes it's tough to find them because they go through thickets like this we've just crossed straight over a road and now we're just heading straight through the bush and so tracking them can sometimes be quite tough right, to try and see if we can't get sort of a visual of his face at some point here because he seems to be as though he doesn't want us to see his face at all this morning and while he does have a nice backside seeing his face would be a much better experience, I would imagine. So, Karula, you want to know if male lions will hunt on their own? Or if they will join with the lionesses and hunt together? Well, a bit of everything. So they will hunt by themselves sometimes. I've seen male lions killing impalas by themselves a few times. So they do hunt by themselves. They will also hunt together as a coalition. So when the Birminghams, all four of them are together and they sort of form this big grouping, then they'll go after things like buffalo. And I've actually seen the Birminghams when there was five of them, when the one was still alive and unfortunately passed away, the five of them managed to bring seven buffalo down in one night. So they can hunt hunt incredibly well and they are able to do it very very well indeed now, sometimes you'll find that they do help the females we know that we've seen the Birminghams helping the Inkahumas at times particularly with the large animals like buffalo their sort of weight and their size and power really does make for a sort of big help particularly when they are hunting the large animals so you will find that they do even hunt with the females too now isn't this the most beautiful picture male lion in the mist you can't ask for anything better than that that is pretty much what anyone would dream of in terms of a sort of epic sighting is lions in the mist itself so Nikki, you say look at that mane and I know look how big their manes have gotten it's so crazy to think in sort of two years ago when they were starting to be seen they had these small little sort of puppy manes around their edge and a little mohawks and now they're getting these big sort of black dark manes it really is so cool to see how they've developed and how big they're actually starting to get now I'm just trying to see where I'm going to go from here because it's very very dense and very very thick but I think I've found a little pathway through here Ferg does this look nice it does doesn't it Right, so careful your head there, Ferg. We don't want to hurt your head. Like I say, being a cameraman in this area, you need almost to get danger pay because sometimes we go over or through some horrible thickets and while these little Land Rovers are great for it, sometimes not so great for Ferg on the back. But this is not too bad so far. Hopefully we're going to just come out on the other side. What you often get with quarries is you get a quarry thicket and you kind of have to get through the thicket itself and then once you're through the thicket it then opens up again. So it looks like it's pretty open just through this gap and hopefully we'll be able to keep up with our male line because he seems like he's not going to stop for much this morning. There we go, you can see he's already through there. Now let's try and see if we can't keep up with him through this horrible sort of area that we're in. 
And I'm hoping we're eventually going to find some sort of water source that maybe he's going to stop and drink for a little bit that we can actually start to see who he is properly and get a proper ID on him once and for all. Certainly not hanging around for anybody today, that's for sure. So there we go. Look at that. Isn't that spectacular? Mist and a male lion. So. Look at that. Striding off into the darkness. So, Francis from Israel, you're wondering if he's looking a little thin. Well, no, not really. He does have, you can see his belly has got a bit of loose skin there, and that's because when lions eat, they gorge themselves into oblivion, and they end up with these big, fat stomachs, and they look sort of massive. And so, every now and then, you'll find that they kind of look much bigger, but he's not thin, no. He's just, he could do with a meal, but it's not imperative that he gets one. Now, I'm going to try and see if I can't get round him, because it seems like he's slowed down just a little bit and enough for us to try and see if we can't just loop around him a little bit but no he's not thin he's looking actually very good um, he could obviously eat a little bit but he's not emaciated in any way and you'll find with lions their weight fluctuates massively they go from a system where they'll be sort of fat and full to a little bit thinner then to fat and full again so it does change quite a bit now hopefully he's going to continue on the path that he's on because it is beautiful look at that and it seems like he maybe has spotted something his demeanor has changed slightly look at how he's walking you see he's being a lot more careful with his paws you see how he's putting his paw one in front of the other and just going very slowly now he's not walking quite as fast as what he was and i wonder if he hasn't spotted something up ahead hopefully he has, and we're going to go into a bit of a stalk mode. Now, I know it's difficult to see him through the thickets, and the area that we're in is very dense and very bushy, and it makes life a little bit harder in terms of being able to follow him. But I'm going to just try to get forward a little bit so we can get a bit of a better line. I was hoping he was going to carry on on this pathway that we're on, but he's decided to almost just stop there. So there we go, Ferg, you've got a window that we can look through at this stage. But there he is, there you see he's stopped now and he's listening. And wouldn't it be amazing if we saw the dark forms of some buffalo coming through? So Riti, wondering why he's all alone? Well, the Birmingham males spend a lot of time on their own because of the fact that they've got a big territory to cover and multiple different females. So whereas in some areas you'll find that there's a small coalition, maybe two males, they'll probably spend a lot more time together and try and stay with a certain pride that they're with. Here, because the four Birmingham males have got a large area and there's the sticks, the torchwoods, they're in, um, in Kahumas, but he's definitely stalking, guys. He's seen something and I can't see what it is yet. So I'm gonna turn off because I don't want to chase whatever it is that he may be potentially looking at. But let's see what he's gonna go after. His whole demeanor has changed completely. You see, look how he's getting lower now. He's sinking those shoulders down, trying to stay as hidden as possible. Now, the reason why male lions tend to not be as successful as what females are is because they have that big mane. And you can see there clearly how the mane contrasts heavily against the grass. And it makes it a little bit easier for prey animals to spot him. But if he just keeps his head down and goes slowly towards where he's going, maybe he'll get lucky. I wonder if there's not a buffalo lurking somewhere in front of us here. If there is, we're in for an interesting morning, that's for sure. I can't see anything. It's just too thick from where he is. I can't sort of make out what he's actually watching at this stage. It amazes me that their senses are as good as they are. You know, we were following him. And he was able to smell and hear rather than see something that's close by. We have no idea what it is. Even though there's three vehicles here, not one of us knows what he's stalking. But he has seen, definitely seen something. And just goes to show that their sort of perception and their awareness of their environment is that much better. Right, well, we're going to try and just see where he goes, and I'm going to try and just reposition so we can get a better view of what's going on. And while we do that, let's cut across to Byron and see where he is and whether or not he's still trying to find Tingana. <laughs> 